Gentlemen and ladies, welcome to the Attribute Flow tutorial. With the release of Wire 7.14 came a new type of flow called Attribute. Attribute will take its place next to Signal and Event Flow. Attribute Flow has many uses, but the most important one and a much requested feature, it allows you to scale the instance count of a node. If that sentence made your head hurt or you don't know what an instance count is, you should check out the instancing course before continuing this video. Link in the description below. So what is attribute flow? Let's start by checking what an attribute is. An attribute is a parameter on a node that, when changed, requires the patch to recompile. In wire 7.13, the previous version of wire, the gradient palette node looked like this. In the node panel, we can see it has two attributes, size and flow. The only way to scale up the instance count was through this panel. When we look at the same node in wire 7.14, the current release, we see that a lot has changed. There are no more attributes in the node panel and the size parameter has become a diamond shaped inlet. So yes, now you can change the size and therefore the instance count by adjusting the size inlet. Almost all parameters previously only tweakable in the patch panel can now be exposed. You can change the size of a linear node. Scale the amount of slices with the size node. And adjust how much a collection should be expanded with the expand node. So what's up with the diamond inlet and why did we need a new flow type to make this possible? Glad you asked. Allow me to explain. So Wireman, how does this work? Well, attribute flow is similar to event flow in that it only updates when the value is changed. The big difference here is that the patch will recompile when a change is made. Recompiling means that Wire will recalculate the whole patch and update instance counts where needed. In this patch, changing the amount of points on the circle pattern node has a cascading effect. There are now 15 points instead of 10. The move node has to duplicate the circle 15 times instead of 10. The shape render has to repeat the gradient 3 times instead of 2. Changing one value could change everything in a patch and therefore we recompile it. Generally speaking, you won't notice this but this is the reason why attribute flow only updates on change. Imagine doing this at signal flow and you'll be recompiling your patch 60 times per second and your computer won't appreciate that. But enough theory, let's see how this works in practice. First, I will expose the points inlet on the circle pattern node. Now I have an input node that allows me to change the amount of points in the pattern. Next, I'll send the same value to the gradient palette's size inlet. As a result, when I increase the amount of points, the gradient palette updates accordingly. Now, I can hear you ask, why can't I expose the instance count directly? This might be a question by some of our more experienced users, so let's address it. Let's look at this rectangle node. In the node panel, we can see that it has an instance count attribute and we can change it. But when I right click on the node, navigate to visibility, I can see that I can't expose the instance count. Why is that? This is because Wire will update instance counts automatically for you and manually changing the instance counts will cause disconnects. Let's say we want to place the rectangle in a grid pattern. We create a move node and a grid pattern node and we hook everything up. As you can see in this little patch, it doesn't matter whether you're sending a single rectangle over or 10. The move node will repeat the incoming collection to the amount it needs, in this case 25. Now what would happen if you had manual control over the instance count of the move node? The grid pattern node would disconnect because it sends out a collection of 25 value and the move node is now forced to operate at a different instance count set by the user. As you might remember from the instancing course, collections get repeated if they are smaller than the required instance count. To demonstrate this, let's add a linear to the height and width of the rectangle node. We'll set the instance count to 2 and adjust the values. Now we have a nice repeating pattern of big and small rectangles. 
Let's talk about some important nodes when dealing with attribute flow. While most nodes had their attributes exposed, some are more commonly used than others. In this section, I'll go through a couple of these nodes. The linear node is a great tool for creating collections of values. Here I am using the linear node to distribute rectangles horizontally by creating a float2 collection. I use the map node to scale the rectangles down as the amount of rectangles increases. Let's expand on this patch by demonstrating the updated size node. Size outputs the size of a collection as an integer, but from now on at attribute flow. Here I am taking the size from the collection of rectangles and applying it to the gradient palette node. As the collection grows and shrinks, the gradient gets updated. Yes, I could just take the size input slider at the leftmost part of the patch and yes, that would be very messy. To round this tutorial up, I want to talk about optimization. Attribute flow can be used to optimize the performance of a patch. Because attributes only get calculated once, you can save a lot of calculations by setting some nodes to attribute flow. In this patch, the gradient palette node is at signal flow by default. This means that it calculates a gradient from the beginning color to the end color every frame. Which could be a valid choice if you want the end user to modulate this in arena or avenue. But in my case, the colors are set and forget. Changing the node to attribute flow means we calculate the gradient only once. This saves us a lot of calculations. To be honest, you won't notice a performance change on a small patch like this. But when you are working on big projects, you could benefit from switching nodes that are only set once to attribute flow. And that was it for this tutorial on attribute flow. Make sure to check out the built-in attribute flow tutorial for even more information and some examples. Or have a look at the cloner and XY oscilloscope examples for some neat tricks using attribute flow and meshes. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Feel free to drop questions in the comments below and I'll see you next time.